At Signal Technology Group, we have a special division known as SnapTag, which specializes in using QR code technologies to solve unique business problems. Our SnapTag business unit gets a lot of special requests for very unique programming situations and use cases. So we thought we'd start sharing some of them here for the community and to demonstrate some of the incredible capabilities that QR codes can bring to your business environment. Here is one such question. Can I program QR codes to track a gamer's deposit, for example, $10 of game playtime, and then have them scan to use credit each time that they play? Now the answer is yes. In this particular scenario, what we're talking about conceptually is a gaming arcade, which has these console device units, or even individual games that are perhaps scattered throughout a mall, or are positioned near other vending machines. And the question is, can a customer, can a gamer walk up, scan a QR code on the side of the machine, have some account debited that they've already paid into, and then they immediately begin playing the game? And the answer is yes. There are, however, a few caveats. First, you will need a website through which the customer's account can be set up, through which payment can be made, or a credit card can be linked. And you'll also need the ability for your console games to be connected to the internet and for the server to initiate a new game. So essentially when someone scans the code, their phone will send a message to the server that yes, uh, we have a credit available on this account and this particular customer wants to play this particular game. The server now needs to tell the game to start after it has verified and debited that credit from the customer's account. So the machine needs to be able to do that. Most modern gaming consoles should be able to do this. And of course, what we would supply is the QR code that goes on the side and the programming that enables the QR code to identify both the user and the game being played. And that allows your application to do its work. Now, one of the great things about this type of environment is that you don't need a front desk cash box in order to collect payment from, from customers. You can if you want to, but because each customer who walks into your arcade or who goes to the mall has their own phone, essentially they have their own point of sale payment terminal. All they have to do is top up through the website or have a pre-linked credit card and any machine that they walk up to that has your QR code on the side and is plugged into your network, they can play a game on your machine. It's that simple. Now, a beautiful thing about this is that it doesn't need to be limited to arcade games. Any device that you can connect to the internet and over the internet tell it to issue product such as a pool game or such as tennis balls or such as golf balls uh, your, the QR code based payment mechanism can work. In fact, any kind of vending machine can work. The challenge with other type of vending machines, however, is the variable pricing. In the case of these types of scenarios, everything that the machine can sell you has the same price. A pool game, a golf ball, one play on a video game. Whereas a vending machine may have multiple different prices in the same vending machine. This complicates things somewhat, but in the case of, for example, a soda machine, as long as every uh, piece of product that can come out of that machine has the same price, this is a very simple scenario. And even in the case of variable pricing, it is possible to enable with a bit more advanced programming. Now let's talk about the parts of this system. First and foremost, you're going to need a website. This website serves a couple of very important purposes. It is your customer's interface into their account. It is how they make payment. It's how they look at what games they have already played. It's how you communicate and interact with them. It's also where they end up once they scan the QR code. When they scan the QR code, it would first go through our system where we would identify the game and identify your servers, and then we forward them on to your system. 
to verify payment and to activate the game. If they do not have an account already set up, they can set up an account on your website. If they do already have an account, they can log in. And if they are already logged in, they don't need to do anything. They simply say, yes, I want to play this game. And immediately they are playing. And that is the most common scenario. The, the customer walks up, scans the code. It verifies, yes, you want to play X-Men right now. I, I say yes, and the game starts. It's pretty much that simple. There's a much, a lot of much more advanced capabilities that you can give, however. Now, the way the customer uses this, walk up, scan the code, and, uh, and then the game starts. There can be a lot of special capabilities done if you want to, for example, link their account to a service such as Google or Facebook. In the case of Facebook, it saves me the trouble of needing to create another username and password. I've simply authorized Facebook on my account so that I don't need to log in again. But it also adds for some very interesting advanced capabilities. If your gaming console is already connected to the internet, and if it has the ability to send the data back after the game has completed and link it into that customer's account, then that means that each customer has can have a complete record of their high scores and their gameplay history. And in fact, if, it's, if they've logged in using Facebook, they can even post their new high score onto their Facebook page, which is quite exciting because it gives a new avenue for your business, which is running these accounts, to promote your service. Let's have a look a little bit at some of the more advanced capabilities. One of the advanced capabilities is, uh, is the possibility of leaderboards. Because in addition to, we've got the high score history of my own gameplay history, but I've also got the possibility to track all time plays on this machine through its entire life even since it has last been reset. And I could track high scores on this game no matter where it's located. For example, if I'm in Chicago and I walk up to an X-Men machine and I want to play it, I can scan the code and it can say, hey, here's the leaderboard for all the X-Men games in all of Chicago. And I can begin playing knowing that, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, compete against people throughout the entire city. It can even be worldwide. There's no reason it needs to be limited in any place. As long as these games are connected into your network and you're receiving that high score data, you can track it anywhere. Uh, we talked about sharing it to social media and leaderboards add a, a whole different dimension to the game. Each time someone scans a code, there's also the possibility to offer an instant win. So I scan the code, and I say I want to start the game and immediately it can give me a one in a hundred chance of say winning 10 more tokens or winning something else perhaps and uh, and in that situation you have the ability to encourage gameplay much like casinos or lottery style wins I can also do volume purchase rewards because I'm purchasing everything online if I spend a hundred dollars maybe I get hundred and twenty tokens instead of a hundred tokens bulk purchase discounts, and you can design things such as metagames. Let's suppose we're using the X-Men example again. If there are eight different X-Men games representing different characters within the universe, part of, uh, part of the experience for the gamer could be, hey, you've just played the X-Men game, why don't you go play Wolverine now? And then you can play the next game and the next game. You can even show where they're located on the map near them so that they can find them. It becomes much more fun to create additional games on top of the individual gaming experience and to be able to share that with my friends. And that leads into even more advanced situations such as team play or competitive team play where we've got coalitions playing against each other. Perhaps each team has to play five different games at the same time, collect an aggregate high score, and then another competing coalition is going to play those same five games and, and we will be able to compare our scores against each other. There are many, many different capabilities that you can use. And one of the really exciting things about QR codes is the ease of installation and the simplicity with which we can integrate them into your system. But everything relies on your system being internet connected and being able 
to take actions from the server, such as starting a game, such as releasing a golf ball. Once you've got that, uh, that ability, pretty much anything is possible.